Hey, what's going on everybody? East Tactics coming at you again with another video. I've been really wanting to make a video to kind of describe some of the things that I've been working on lately and to give a little bit of clarity on a topic that was a little bit unclear for me, at least in the beginning. Anyway, so this is my shop right here. And what we're gonna be talking about today is pinion gears. Um, as many of you know, this is the Arma Creighton. It's the 2019 version 4 6F. And it comes with a stock pinion gear with 13 teeth. And it comes with an extra pinion gear with, I believe, 16 teeth. This is the faster pinion gear, which will get your car up. Um, uh, I think the box has 60 miles an hour plus with this one. So um, a lot of people though, you know, like to take their cars to the next level. And so you can jump on to Amazon or wherever and actually buy pinion gears that are 17 tooth, 18 tooth, 19 tooth, 20 tooth. Um, I've never seen anybody talk about using anything higher than 22 teeth. So I went ahead and picked up a Robinson Racing pinion gear. And this is an extra hard 20 tooth, five millimeter mod one pinion gear. So the first thing that you need to know about purchasing a new pinion gear for your Armour Creighton is that it needs to have two components to make it fit. The size of the hole, which in this case is the five millimeter. And also, and a lot of people don't realize this, but you need to make 100% sure that the pitch, which is basically the size of the teeth and the way that this thing was manufactured. So this is a mod one pitch. So for the Arma Creighton, you need to make sure it's mod one. Other examples of would be 48P or different pitch sizes. Make 100% sure that whatever model car you're using or you're picking up a new pinion for, that it not only has the right millimeter size, but the right pitch. So that's the first thing I wanted to make sure you had clarity on. The next thing is to just kind of give you a little bit of understanding about how these work. So the smaller the size of the gear is, it translates to quicker acceleration. The larger the size of the gear, it translates to, to higher top end speed. So you want to keep that in mind. Going with, you'll notice the size difference on this is much bigger. So you don't necessarily lose a ton of acceleration because it's almost hard to even detect it. But you definitely, with the jump from 13 to 20, you're gonna get a massive increase in top end speed. Just in general terms, getting a gear with more teeth means you're gonna have a faster vehicle. You're gonna, you're gonna, you probably won't even be able to tell that it has faster or lower acceleration. But what you will definitely be able to tell an improvement in is the top end speed of the vehicle. So that's the other thing I wanted to like kind of fill you in on and let you know how it works, the mechanics behind it. So the next part of this video ultimately is I want to show visually the difference between the 16. Uh, so these two I'm not, um, I'm not even going to do testing on because they're out of the way, but I do have a, I believe a 17 tooth gear currently in my vehicle and I'm going to be upping it to a 20 tooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 3S, I'm going to power it up with 3S power, which is just one of my batteries. And I'm going to do a before and after ballooning impact on acceleration on camera so that you can see the difference literally between going from you know, a jump from, um, a jump of like three to four teeth in your pinion gear. And I'm gonna do it on both speeds. I do have the option of, set, of, of powering my car with, with one 3S battery, and then I can plug it up so that it's with 6S. And I'll set my camera far enough back to where you can see 
the, the ballooning of the tires and we'll just basically have a fun little experiment here so that you can visually see the difference in speed between these the different type of pinion gears. And in this case, uh, a 16 or 17 tooth jumping to a 20 tooth. So I'm gonna get my camera set up and we'll uh, make quick work of this test. All right, so let's test it out. Um, 3S power with, I believe this is a, I wanna say 17 tooth pinion gear. Um, I'll confirm that once I get it out and we replace with the 20 tooth. So, all right, let me hook it up. All right, so that's 3S power. Um, I'm gonna go to full speed a second time. All right. All right, now let's jump it up to 6S power. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove 17 tooth pinion gear and install our 20 tooth. I have another video guys where I show on these two screws right here strip out really easy because you've got to really cinch them down pretty tight and unless you've got a really high quality Allen wrench set they strip pretty easy. So what I did and I notched a notch in the top of both of these to basically make it to where I need to use a flathead to get them on and off. And it's so much easier and you don't have to stress about stripping them out. So watch that video if you want to uh, get the details on that. So hopefully it's not too hard to get this gear out. All right, so this is actually a 16 tooth. So I'm jumping from a 16 tooth to a 20 tooth, which is four gears, or I mean four um, teeth. So let's see what kind of uh, impact that makes. I get the feeling it's gonna be a lot easier if I remove completely, which is one of the beauties of the 2004 or the 2019 um, lineup is they make it to where it's just easy in, easy out on this. So I'm going to go ahead and just get it removed. So in order to do that though, I got to completely remove these two screws. And it's so much easier playing with these two screws when there is a, um, a flathead screwdriver notch placed into it. I was stressing out when I stripped when I stripped those. So one thing I want to show you real quick, I haven't put it together completely yet, but I do have a video showing how I installed this hobby wing fan onto my vehicle. And that is, it's another important factor when you're increasing the pinion gear size and the, the teeth size that the higher you go the more stress that you're putting on and so it's really important to make sure it's cool enough so i would say anything past 17 teeth you want to start thinking about putting a some sort of a heat sink and a fan onto your motor and i i'm gonna drop a video that shows like step by step on how i did it so anyway let's go ahead and get this pinion gear on
gonna use my paper, the paper method. I'm gonna put that between. Again, when you're pushing that, when you're pushing that thing in, you you don't want to cram it in there. You want to just kind of watch for the paper to start get, get, getting the crinkle going, and a nice a nice push in. All right, both tires forward, paper out. All right, let's give that a shot. Okay, 3S power, let's see the difference. Okay, we'll see if it's noticeable. Now I'm gonna pump it up to 6S power. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. wow. Massive difference guys. I mean obviously you knew it was gonna be faster But when you watch some of those YouTube videos and you see those tires like ballooning out like crazy Discs we are now closer to that reality with the 20 tooth pinion gear for sure. I'm gonna show you again really quick um, I'll set this video up to show side-by-sides of course So that's 3S power. Um, I'm gonna go to full speed a second time. See the difference. Now I'm gonna pump it up to 6S power. much faster. This thing's gonna be a freaking beast. Anyway, ultimately guys, that's what I wanted to showcase today. Also, tire ballooning isn't necessarily a good thing. I'm, I'm not saying it should happen. A lot, a lot of people like to buy better tires that um, kind of mitigate the ballooning factor, but I'm just using the balloon factor as kind of a test to see the difference between jumping four different teeth from 16 teeth to 20 teeth, which again begs the need for a motor and a fan. And yeah, I am, I am blown away by the difference in speed or ballooning when it comes to 16 teeth and 20 teeth. So thanks guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos. Um, so now that I've got my car back up and running though, I plan on hitting the jump park again. Um, I've installed some pretty heavy duty upgrades in this that I've got videos on. Um, I've installed the hot racing rear um, differential housing. I've installed a higher quality rear shock tower from Just Bash at RC. Um, I've got a video talking about this um, tower to tower support beam and how it's a good idea to not have it securely mounted on both ends. If you look closely here, you'll see I've got um, some some really thick rubber O-rings that are used as a shock, and I took the bolt out on this end. Long story short, I got another video on that. Um, I do plan on making a video here shortly that kind of goes over all the upgrades that I've done on my Armour Creighton since I've gotten it. Uh, and some of them are must, are must do upgrades. Um, so check out the history on my videos or subscribe to my channel. 
to get updated on new videos. Once again, this is East Tactics on how to um, better set up your Arma Creighton vehicle. All right, guys, East Tactics out.